ask them how I can help them save themselves because you're worth something. You're worth something and for so long I thought I wasn't worth anything. For so long I thought no one loved me. That this person is all I have. When you love someone and you find out they're pregnant, you don't take... Hey everyone, welcome to my channel and thank you so much for watching. As you can tell by the title of this video, we're going to be talking a little bit of um, domestic violence and a little bit of um, being in an abusive relationship. Um, so this is just a little bit difficult for me because it is kind of based off of my life. But the whole reason why I did want to go ahead and get into this story was because I have been following the Gabby Petito case and it just kind of resonated with home with me. It made me um, feel like I should talk about this. This is such a taboo subject. Most people don't talk about it. It's probably something that's like behind closed doors and that's it. So yeah, without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump into this video. Okay, so first off, I do want to say I'm making this video for other young girls who are out there because I'm pretty sure there's tons of young girls who are going through similar situations and maybe you don't recognize the flags or maybe you're in the situation and you just feel like you don't know how to get out of it. So I just wanted to tell you like my experience and what happened with me a little bit <sighs> okay so just a little backstory i met this guy um, when i was like in seventh grade he ended up getting into like some trouble and he had to go to like a detention center and i didn't see him again until my ninth grade year i'm like 15 and yeah i'm just a freshman in high school and he gets out of his program that he was in and he hits me up and he starts trying to talk to me again and I'm like okay well yeah he seemed cool so uh we just kind of pick up where we kind of pick up back we kind of so we just kind of pick back up where we left off and we were just kind of friends when we first left off and that friendship became a um a relationship um very in the beginning there were some red flags like jealousy controlling um where were where was i going what was i wearing who am i talking to those are just like a few red flags that i kind of ignored now also a backstory i come from a um uh, ah, okay <laughs> okay 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 uh this is kind of hard to talk about let me take let me take a sip Abuse. Um, abuse is a pattern, a circle that keeps going. Um, most of the time the abuser has gone through some trauma in their childhood or just some, um, some toxic issues. Me, myself, I, <laughs> I grew up in a home where it was just a little bit toxic, very strict, um, discipline um i did get spankings and whoopings um along with other things nowadays you can't do that to your kids um, and i'm not just talking about a regular spanking i'm talking about um just very controlled you know if i slipped up and said something wrong to my mom or any adult for that matter i would be popped in the mouth um i've been called every name under the sun um so i'm not here to bash anyone or hurt anyone's feelings because that's not what this is about it's just to educate other young girls who are out there so so for this kind of behavior it was quite normal for me 
uh, when I started seeing, when he started showing me um, more red signs of stuff that was just more um, abusive, uh, I took it as, oh, this is normal. I'm used to this. Uh, this is how people show affection um, is by being tough on them and and being just more in a controlled environment. So I did think that was that's normal, right? I grew up seeing um, parents or loved ones or just people in my family um, kind of butt heads, go at it, be a little bit toxic themselves. Um, so it was pretty normal to me when he started expressing these kind of um, behaviors towards me. I didn't really necessarily at first think like, oh my God, I'm in like such a scary situation. But bitch, I really was in, fuck a, in fucking a scary situation. Like um, I almost lost my life a few times. Um, and that's what made me really want to uh, do this video is because... Poor Gabby, she lost her life due to domestic violence. And just in those little bitty clips that we've seen of her, she was obviously distressed. She was obviously going through something. But even though there's an officer there and you're probably thinking like, say something, tell the officer what's going on. It's not that easy. Me and myself, I have been in a situation where me and this person were arguing pretty bad it got pretty physical it got pretty loud we lived in apartments so um the neighbors up or down they called the cops on us um the cops came and i remember the person was like um he told me jump in the shower you know take off all your clothes get in the shower like if you're really taking a shower i was a little scared so i did in those kind of situations, you just want whatever hap whatever is happening just to stop. So you kind of do whatever they say. Now, the cop did knock on the door and he did say that he had to do a welfare kind of check. Just because he did hear, just because I guess on the call it was like that it was a guy and girl arguing. So he just had to check on me and make sure that I was okay. Even though I don't think he did a good job, I think because he was a male officer and being in the situation he should have called for backup and asked for a female officer because i was in the shower and i didn't come out and um uh, i remember him asking me hi is everything okay what is your name and i'm just like yeah i'm taking a shower um just because in that moment i'm so scared like you're scared of this person this person has put so much fear into you whether they have shown you what they can do they threatened you verbally or you know what they're capable of so you're just scared in that moment in my situation every time that i wanted to leave or try to leave or said hey i'm gonna tell someone or do something about this the person would always threaten me and threaten me with he's gonna um, bust all the windows to my mom's car or bust the windows to her house or start problems with people in my family and just because I didn't want any drama for anyone in my family I kind of kept quiet and you might be like you're dumb but I mean at the end of the day my mom she was a single parent um she did what she could for us and you know me bringing drama over and having somebody knock out her windows or do something to her or my family i just didn't want that i knew my mom couldn't afford it and you know in my mind i'm looking out for them i don't want nothing to happen to them so i kind of just stayed quiet and stayed put but now like thinking back i know that that was wrong i should have said something and i have mentioned it to my mom like now that i'm older and i'm an adult uh, we have talked about these things because, like I said, I ran away and there was uh, many years I didn't speak to my mom. And so we have, like, reconnected and, like, talked and I have brought these situations up to her and kind of told her just a little bit, not too much. I don't think she really knows what I really endeared and what I really went through. Um, but she always did say, like, um, you should have let him come over and let him try to bust my windows or whatever. I would have called the cops on him. I would have pressed charges on him. She even was like, I would have knocked his ass out. With, I would have knocked his ass out with something. Um, thank God. I'm, I'm pretty sure every mother is a real one when it comes to her kids. They're going to protect them no matter what. 
But as a young adult, me and my, or a young child, because I was a child, me and my mom, we didn't have the best relationship at all, at all, at all. So in, at this time, I didn't think that I could necessarily talk to her the way how I can kind of talk to her now. Um, I was kind of more scared and I didn't know what she would think. And like I said, I just didn't want to bring the drama or problems over to their house. So I stayed quiet. Um, the person did isolate me from my family and friends. Every friend that I had, as in like a girlfriend, um, he slept with, had sex with, or, you know, just did something um, disgusting with. So um, I didn't have any friends. At, at one point, I just stopped talking to people because I just felt like I couldn't trust the girls. I couldn't trust the guy. Even to this day, I have trust issues with girls because I was always like, I always thought like, even though he's a messed up person, you're supposed to be my homegirl. You're supposed to be my friend. We've been through stuff, ride or die. And you're going to fucking sleep with my man? You're going to sleep with my man? <sighs> Anyways, so he put himself in between me and my friends so I wouldn't have friends. When it came to my family, he would always tell me because he did know that I did grow up like in a toxic household. And he would always tell me, oh, they don't love you. They don't care about you. That's why they treat you the way they treat you. So after so long of someone telling you all of these things, you start to believe it. And you start to believe what they're saying and think that you're worth nothing and that you start to think that you're not good enough and you start to think that people don't love you and you start to think that you really are alone and this person is all you have oh, I don't want to cry you start to think this person is all you have and so you lean so much on this person when they're using that against you they know you have nobody they know you're vulnerable and they take advantage of that situation and I remember I went, whoo, let me see, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, maybe like three or four years where I didn't speak to anyone in my family whatsoever. Like no one. I wasn't allowed to have a cell phone. I wasn't allowed to have any kind of social medias. I wasn't allowed to do anything without this person's without this person's control or opinion like they controlled everything and in my mind at that time i thought oh this is love oh he thinks i'm cheating oh he doesn't want me to leave that means he loves me that means he wants me to stay with him he wants to stay with me like you start to think like all the especially when you grow up with that cycle like i said you just think that's love and now as a grown woman, I know that's not love. I have experienced love and it's still very hard. It's a process even to this day because I'm in such a place in my life where I don't have to deal with anything like this. I can wear whatever I want. If I want to show my boobs on the internet or like wear, well, you can't see, but wear like just a little crop top. Like I can do that. If I want to wear all this makeup, I can do that. If I want to get mad and say, you know what? I'm leaving to the bar and go have some drinks. I can do that. If I say, hey, I'm going to go hang out with my mom and my friends. I can do that. I'm in such a place where there's so much trust and the person just wants to make me happy that they don't want to say, oh, you can't wear that. You can't do this. You can't. It's always yes, yes, yes. And it's just so different from how I live now to then. Um, even so much so that even though like I'm in a good place in my life and I'm in a good relationship, I, because I grew up with these toxic traits, um, I've been in such a toxic relationship that those traits don't just disappear in myself. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's a work in progress. Like, there's still times where I'm the... T I, I look at myself and I'm like, okay, I'm being toxic. I'm saying things to my partner that I shouldn't say. But at least I... And luckily, my partner doesn't respond in a negative way when I act like that. He totally understands where I'm coming from and what I have been through. That he's so patient with me. And ladies, that's when you know you got somebody. I know... 
you feel like in this moment, like you're going through, you're talking to this guy or this guy or that guy, and you just feel like it doesn't work that when you think you have a bond with someone or you think you've been with somebody for so long and you just don't want to start over. Like why start over when you already have this, when you could just fix the issues. But when someone loves you, there's not really much to fix besides like financial when, when i when i say financial i mean like grinding um you two working together to like your biggest problem in life as a couple should be like let's get this money you know let's go buy a house let's buy a car let's go on a vacation let's get this money you're not working what's you know <laughs> like those should be not necessarily should be your issues, but it shouldn't be, you have too much makeup on, you need to take that off, or you can't call your mom, or you can't wear that, or who are you on the phone with, or why do you want to go hang out with your friends, so what, you can go cheat, and you can go meet guys, that's not acceptable, that is not love, ladies, and I know it's hard, because you feel like, oh, I'm only getting older, or either like, oh my god, I already talked to this guy, and this guy, and I need to find someone but nine out of ten nine out of ten the person you meet in your young teen young adult life is not the person you stay with more than likely you meet a and if that person is the is meant to be with you and meant to be the person you stay with and meant to be the person you stay with they would they will come back it comes back your true love will always come back but don't be in a relationship. If, if a guy is being ugly with you or threatening you, don't sit and think that that's love. Because for a long time, I thought that was love. And it really, it's, it's not love. It's, it's not. It's not. They're just really insecure in themselves. And they just, they're just trying to put you down to make you feel like all you have is them. But girl, you don't you have your family and if you don't and if you really feel like you don't have any family girl hit me up message me hit me up on my instagram you know send me a message and i'll come hang out with you i'll be your friend you could talk to me about whatever it is because i've been there and i know what it feels like for me to leave this person this person went to jail And I, I got out. I got out. I stopped all communications. I didn't write. I didn't send money. I didn't go see the person. Now this wasn't the first person. This wasn't the first time this person has gotten in trouble. And I had always been there. But this time around, I was like, I can't do this anymore. I'm, I'm out. I'm not gonna let somebody control me from jail. I'm not gonna let somebody control me and tell me what I can and can't do when they can't even do what the fuck they want to do. It's not going to happen. So, I left. I left his house. I left his family's house. I gathered all my stuff. I went and bought me a little junky, junky, junky ass car that had no motherfucking handles. I had strings on both sides to open the passenger and the driver's side door. I went and got me a little job at McDonald's and I worked my ass off to get where I am now and to have what I have. And thanks to the partner I have, like, we're A1. But I know it's not easy. And I know it's really difficult. And I know sometimes you can feel like, oh, they're jealous because they love me. Or, oh, they hit me because they love me. Or, oh, they did that. They hit me because it was my fault. It's not your fault, baby. It's their fault. It's never your fault. Don't sit and blame. Don't let them... Don't let them blame you to make you think that you're the issue. Why? Because you... You had an opinion about something and maybe you shared your thoughts and you said, hey, can you help me wash the dishes? Or, hey, can you help me do this? And they flipped out on you. Baby, that's not your fault. You should be able to ask your partner or whoever and just say, hey, I need a little bit of help. Can you help me? 
I don't know. I mean, I wasn't even allowed to go work. I got a job and the person went to the job my first day and tried to fight the month, the manager and said I was trying to sleep with him. I'm like, boy, my first day, we broke. We homeless. We have no food. I haven't eaten in three days. Like, I'm trying to work at this little fast food restaurant to bring us some money. And then you're going to sit there and say that I'm cheating? You're going to try to beat the man up and say I'm sleeping with the boy? I know this story is all over the place. <laughs> There's so much that I truly, truly, truly do want to say. I have so many stories on this topic. And some of them are pretty graphic. Some of them are pretty ugly. Like. Almost died in the woods. And nobody would have ever found me. I would have been stabbed or my throat slit and... I don't know if you can see that, but I just got goosebumps because it's true. Like, oh, it's so true. And there's so much to the story, but so I do want to hopefully save some, some stories to, to share with people who will see this video and will ask questions and ask them how I can help them save themselves because you're worth something you're worth something and for so long I thought it wasn't worth anything for so long I thought no one loved me that this person is all I have when you love someone and you find out they're pregnant, you don't take them behind the alley and beat them in their motherfucking stomach with your fucking fist. You don't do that. That's not love. You don't put your hands around somebody's neck and watch them faint over and over and over again. You don't have sex with someone when they say they don't want to have sex. You don't get on top of them and do what you want to do to them. They're not your property. So the next time he tries to get on top of you, when you tell him no, you bite him in the fucking balls. You kick him in the motherfucking balls and you fucking run. I know it's not easy to leave someone in that situation, but the best thing you can do is leave because if not, you will end up like Gabby. You will be one of those girls missing, haven't been seen. And the person who did it, the person who you spend every day with, the person who you say who says who says that they love you and would do anything for you they dip out they dip the fuck out you supposed to fucking love me and you gonna dip the fuck out after you kill me bitch bitch i will haunt you for the rest of your motherfucking life oh well this makeup look was so cute it's, it's, it's done. There's so much I want to say. I don't know how to say it. I don't know how to word it. I hope to make a part two to this. If you want it, please leave me a comment down below. Um, don't forget to hit that like button, comment, and share this video. Share it to someone who you think is going through it. Someone who you think may be in an abusive relationship and they think that person loves them. And it's maybe early in the early signs where they're just controlling or maybe pushing that person around but not really done anything. Send them this video because it it can get ugly. Let them know that you love them. When you when you used to be friends with someone or a family member and they used to be around all the time and then all of a sudden they're not, reach out to them. And see what's going on. 
check on them because they have to know that you love them they have to know that more people love them and not just the person abusing them the third word something i feel myself getting really emotional so i'm gonna go ahead and end this video if you liked it like i said go ahead and give me a thumbs up share this video with someone who needs it until next time bye